If this year is the year you're going to be starting your streaming journey, you're going to need to learn a few things. And step one is understanding OBS and getting the best quality possible out of it. If you're brand new, you need to know these things. Or maybe you're a seasoned streamer who just wants to know how to maybe tighten up the screws and make things a little bit better, nicer, cleaner, etc. In today's video, I'm going to be going through everything you need to know and maybe some things you didn't know about OBS. Okay, so without further ado, let's head on over to OBS and start from the beginning. I'll see you over the PC. Uh, Jared123, thank you for the two months. Uh, much appreciated. Very cool. Uh, welcome aboard. He? Everyone, this today we're going to be doing a straw. little bit of... Uh... You! Oh, you think I wouldn't have caught you. You think you got away with it, but you didn't. That's it. Shut up! I thought I told you to fix your stream. Look at it. It is terrible. And there's only one way you can fix it. You have terrible alerts. You have terrible designs. Everything is wrong with your stream. And I gave you the solution, own.pro. And you didn't go and download this amazing plugin to use on your streams and make your life way easier with all the alerts, transition bundles, all the things you will need to make a great stream. But you didn't listen. And now you're going to face the consequences. Come on. Come here. I don't care. You, you asked for this. You need to download on Pro now! It's an amazing plugin for OBS! It's an amazing plugin! It's, and all you need to do is follow the link in the description and use code x 2 shoes at checkout and save massive savings on a yearly subscription. You, you didn't do it. You think I want to do this? You think I want to spend my day trying to do this and fix things for you? Wow, that certainly was an interesting ad read and possibly a little bit dark, but don't worry, that was all a joke and I was not harmed in the making of this advert. Big thanks to Own for sponsoring today's video. Again, you can find them linked down below. Fantastic plugin for streamers. Now, without further ado, let's get back to the video and teach you guys how to use OBS the best way. All right, so here we are within OBS. Now, don't worry if your OBS looks a little bit different than mine. We'll get to that later. First thing we got to do is connect your streaming platform to OBS. So once you open the settings, you'll find stream. All you got to do is click on stream, select your service, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, whatever it is you use, and either connect your account, which you just log in and sign up and connect to, and it puts your stream key in for you, or you can copy and paste your stream key in like I have from whatever service you use. Some of you might be wondering why I'm using Restream. No, it's not because I multi-stream to other platforms. It's because where I live in the world, this actually provides me better connection to Twitch's servers. Now, very important, never show anybody your stream key. If you are for whatever reason changing any settings in OBS or doing anything like that, make sure that it's hidden. You don't want that information ever getting out because you don't want someone else to take over your stream. The next thing we're gonna do is look at settings. Now, in output, there's two modes, right? There's simple and there's advanced. I'm gonna be going through the advanced tab today because I feel like it gives you more flexibility and more options. But if you want to, you can apply most of the same settings to the simple tab as well, if that's something you're more comfortable with. All right. So first things first, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you want to go ahead and select the NVIDIA NVENC encoder. This is specifically using technology in NVIDIA cards to encode your video. By default, I believe this is set to X264, which uses a lot of your processing power. You also want to go down to rate control and have your rate control be CBR. Now, bitrate's the big thing here. If you're a streamer and you notice a lot of blurriness on your stream, especially during like high action moments or fast paced gameplay. If it starts to blur 90% of the time, it's because your bit rate is too low. If you're streaming on Twitch, there's a lot of conversation around the bit rate limit on Twitch. People say that you can't go any higher than 6,000. However, Nutty made a video recently that you can actually go up a little bit higher at times. I set it to 7,500. Now, this is all going to be down to your internet connection. Most of you, I'm going to guess if you're watching this video, have semi-decent internet connections and have more upload speed than 7,500 kilobytes a second. If you want to stream at 1080p, I do think you're going to need at least 6,000 kilobytes. Even that's not really enough. But let's say aim for the limit, which is 6,000, and work your way down from that. Your keyframe interval wants to be at 2. My preset is max quality. If you're noticing some frame drop issues, you can drop it down to quality or performance, but aim for that. Look ahead, you want ticked visual tuning. You want checked as well. GPU set to zero and max B frames set to two. Now, if you're somebody like me who also records videos as well, here's a quick run through of that. You wanna make sure that you're in the advanced tab here. I have my recording format set to MP4. People will argue this with me. They'll say that MP4 corrupts. Oh, it's not a great format to edit with. You should use MKV. I've used MP4 since I started here on YouTube. Never had any problems. However, you can record in multiple formats should you want to. You want to have rate control set to CQP, your CQ level set to 14, your keyframe interval set to two, your preset are going to aim for max quality and your profile high. Look ahead unchecked and visual tuning checked 
GPU zero again, and max B frames is two. Now, this is assuming you want to record in 1080, 60 frames a second, which I'm assuming is the benchmark for most of you. However, you can start dropping these things like max quality and stuff down. If you're recording in 1080 and you're losing some frames, you can start to drop some of these things down. Make sure your encoder as well is NVENC again. Now, your audio devices. You do have the ability in OBS to have, say, a separate track for your microphone, separate track for your desktop, separate track for your Discord. You can route everything. However, I don't do that. I'm just assuming that you, you know, are basic like me. Separate 48 kilohertz. Doesn't really matter too much here. Channels want to be stereo. And then in your desktop device, you want to select where your desktop audio comes from. Mine comes from an audio interface. So I got to select that. And your microphone, you go tick whatever you have for your microphone. Bang, good to go. Now, video, this is an important one. This is where we get into the cheese of, of things looking good. Now, I do stream in 1080p. A lot of people will say, oh, you shouldn't as an affiliate stream in 1080p because people sometimes can't load your stream. Maybe I am missing out on viewers, people who are coming in and just can't load the stream. But, you know, I've never had anyone say it to me. I do believe this was kind of the meta like a good few years ago, but now the technology is, is advancing and a lot of places have access to high-speed internet or 4G or 5G isn't really an issue for most people. I also found a lot of success streaming at 1600 by 900p, which is kind of a middle ground between 720 and 1080. But now I've just kind of kept it at 1080. I'm going to leave this up to you. I'm not going to tell you that you shouldn't stream in 1080, and I'm not going to tell you that you should stream in 720. But let's say, for example, you want to stream in, in 1080. So you'd set your base canvas resolution 1080p because I have a 1080p monitor, and then you put your output scaled resolution at 1080p as well. However, if you wanted to basically play in 1080, you would leave this as 1080, but you wanted to stream in 720, you could just drop this down to 720 here. I would kind of recommend if you can not going any lower than 720. I've had some people tell me that, you know, there's no point streaming in 1080p on Twitch because the bitrate limit doesn't actually fully allow it. However, I've just found my stream is good quality. People have always commented that it looks good and all that kind of thing. So that's how I do it. I don't check anything else off. So your downscale filter, you want to put as Lanxos and you want to aim for uh, 60 frames a second as well here. If you're having some trouble, you can drop to something like 30, but where possible, dumb down other settings before you dumb down your FPS. You want to aim for 60 frames a second at all times. All right, and that's pretty much it. Once you have those settings, you are basically ready to stream. Now, your problem is that if you're looking at your own OBS, you probably don't see anything in your uh, scenes or sources window. Now, this is pretty easy to do. It looks really intimidating, I know, but bear with me. It is really, really not that intimidating once you get into it. So basically, you can see here that I have a couple of different scenes and settings. You basically want to add a scene for every single thing that's going to happen on your stream. So every scene. Think about this. My starting soon is a scene. Me being on camera, that is another scene. Me playing games, that's another scene. Think of them as location. So let's say, for example, you are adding a scene. All you would do is go down to this little plus arrow down the corner here, click it, and you would name your scene. Let's say, for example, starting soon, right? I already have one, so we're just gonna use mine for uh, as a result. So all the things in here are sources, and your sources plug into your scenes. But let's say I wanted to add a little camera in here, okay? Let's say I have another camera, and I wanna have that showing me while I'm on the screen. If you don't have this in, you would simply add a new video capture device and you would select from all your video capture devices. However, I already have one, so I'm just going to select one that I've already used before. So I can say add existing and I can say GoPro Hero 5. Okay, now you can see my GoPro Hero 5. Where is it? It's behind this curtain. So now you guys can see me. This is filling up the entire screen, which I don't want because I still want people to see my uh, starting soon graphics so they know I'm starting soon. So I can just click the corner here, drag it down and put it wherever I want. This is quite of a cool thing. You know, you could be setting up your stream, chatting away and people can see you getting ready. They know you're there. They're waiting for you. It's, it's cool. So that's how you would add a source. Your source could be anything from a chat box like I have, a sub goal like I have up here. It could be an audio source. It could be a window capture of a game. It could be anything. So let's say you just added a camera and you wanted to add a game in there now. All you do is make another scene for your game, which is over here. You would just switch to that. I don't have one on, so it's just going to be blank. But you can see here that I just have a game cap down here. And I added that by just selecting game capture. And that's how it's added in. It will automatically pick up your game. If you wanted to constantly be recording your monitor or streaming your monitor, all you would do is select display capture. So anything I do in my monitor now, you guys can see. I can go ahead and open a game. 
been playing Age of Empires a lot lately because I'm addicted to it. So yeah, that's basically that. That's how you would do it. So you can probably see at the minute that I have some things that you probably don't if you've just downloaded OBS or maybe you weren't aware of these things. Up the top here, I've got an activity feed. You can see that I can grab this and drag it and make it bigger. You can see all the people who have followed me since yesterday and I was offline. You can see my last sub from yesterday's stream. Jana, thank you for the tier three. Very kind. Now, this was a big feature that was built into something like Streamlabs OBS that you could see this all the time and you could easily go back and look at it. If you're playing a game and somebody followed you and you missed the name, you could just check your activity feed and say, oh, I'm using Crab. Thank you for the follow. Now, with OBS, uh, when it comes bare, you are not going to have that. You are not going to have your chat built in and you are not going to have an activity feed. Now, you can go on Twitch and open up your chat and pop it out and have it dock in OBS, but I'm going to show you guys a really easy way to do that and get it. If you guys go into streamelements.com, connect it to your Twitch. I highly recommend using them. You can use it to manage your alerts, your chat boxes, any sort of widgets you have on your stream, as well as merch and all these things. And it's completely free to use. Definitely check out Stream Elements. They do amazing work. But they also offer this plugin called SE Live, which is also free. So what you want to do is go ahead and download StreamElements.Live. Once you download it, you'll be met with this screen like any other window. You want to hit next, you want to agree. Uh, and then what you want to do is you want to install it and make sure it's installed in the same folder that OBS is installed into, okay? Now, I've already done this, so I'm not going to bother going ahead and doing it again. It would make no sense. Now, once you do that, open up OBS and you'll have these things. And you also have this little stream elements bar up the top as well. Now, the beauty of these docs is that you can put them anywhere. You just click them and you can drag them to be wherever you want on the screen. You can put it there, make it bigger, smaller. Like if you don't care about seeing your little preview, you can make them super big. You can make them super small. Wherever you want, you can dock them. I put my chat on the right and I have my activity feed on the left. It's a fantastic plugin. I highly recommend you guys checking out. It makes your life so much easier, especially for somebody like me who's recently migrated from Streamlabs over to OBS. It really makes everything really manageable and it's so easy to set up. So definitely check out streamelements.live. I'll leave it linked down below as well. Now to wind down the video, we're just going to talk about some OBS tips and tricks that I love and wish I knew sooner. Some of them are super small, but they really, really, really help in the long run. So the first thing is locking your sources. So if you look here down in your sources, right, you've got these little locks beside it. Now, sometimes when I go live, uh, maybe I've moved something or added something new or I'll notice when that big two shoes comes up on my starting soon screen, my chat box is actually in the way of it. Sometimes what I'll go to do is click it and think I have it selected and I'll move it, but I end up moving the entire starting soon screen. Now I've made a bit of a mistake on stream and chat are laughing at me. But what you want to do is if you lock your scene, so let's say be it your full camera or your gameplay or whatever, if you lock that, even if you have it selected, you can't move it. It's locked. You have to unlock it to move. So now if I go to click my chat box, I can move it anywhere. And even if I don't click it, I click maybe on the screen, I'm not going to move anything. So keep your scenes locked. If it's something that you know you're definitely not going to move or something that you rarely move, Keep it locked to avoid messing anything up. Another thing as well that really, really, really helped me was when I first switched to OBS, I was noticing a lot of frame drops uh, during games that I absolutely never had any uh, trouble streaming before. And one thing that helped me fix it, when you're running OBS, you can right click it and run it as an administrator. This will automatically make your computer allocate more resources or to prioritize more resources to OBS when you're recording. It, trust me, it fixed so many of my issues. I spent so long in settings trying to change things around and move all these different settings to try and get rid of uh, these little random frame drops. And all I needed to do was run it as admin. Now that's not gonna be the fix every time, but definitely try running it as an admin if you're experiencing some issues. And finally, my last OBS tip for today, one that I've come across with and one I'm using actually right now to record this video is recording your camera and whatever's on your screen separately. Now, this does not work for streaming, but however, it does work for recording. If you're somebody like me who makes YouTube videos or even TikToks, this could be really, really, really helpful. And you can do it right inside OBS without ever having to change anything. You want to go to OBS, open the settings and head on over to the video tab again. Now, here where we've had 1920 by 1080, okay, assuming that you're streaming in 1080 or playing in 1080, you want to put some new values in here. The value you're going to put in here is 3840 by 1080. And you want to do the same on your output resolution. All right, you're going to apply that and you're going to get this. I already have these sources in here, but I'm going to show you how this works. Basically, what you're going to get is get this really wide screen. So in here right now, I've got a display capture and I've got my GoPro that we saw earlier. So I'm going to right click my GoPro and I'm going to hit fit to screen. All right, now that's going to drop it down to this side and I'm going to drag it right the way over to the left of the screen. And then on my display capture, which is capturing my OBS right now, I'm going to drag that I'm also going to right click it and say fit the screen. I'm going to drag that over so that it is fitting perfectly in the screen. 
Now I've got this hugely wide video. So your left monitor would be your main camera, okay? And the right side of your OBS would be your game. Now, both of them are in their own individual 1080p window. You are now capturing your camera at 1080p and your game at 1080p. Now, the beauty of this is awesome. This allows you to make a video and isolate the camera and put it wherever you want. So once you've recorded your double screen clip, it's as easy as importing that clip into your editing software of choice and then duplicating that video so that you have two of them. You can now crop down one of your clips to just be your webcam and then move your other clip center screen to be your gameplay. Definitely give it a go. Super easy to do. And uh, yeah, try it out. Make some cool videos. And everybody, that's going to bring us to the end of today's video. I hope it was informative for you. You guys have been asking for an OBS tutorial for a while. I know I wasn't the most detailed, but that's not what it was really about. I didn't want to bore you with settings and that kind of thing. I just wanted to show you how I set up my streams and hopefully it will give you guys some insight. If there's something that you do on your stream or that you've done within your own OBS that I haven't covered, definitely let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear it. There's other links down below to support me as well, such as Patreon and all that good stuff. Thank you to all my patrons this month. Here is their names. Thank you, beautiful people. And if you want to support the channel, consider subscribing over Patreon or becoming a channel member here on YouTube. Lots of different tiers. Very much appreciated. Subscribe if you enjoyed today's video. Leave a like on it if you liked on it. And if you yourself are ready to take your streaming journey a little bit further, here's a list of do's and don'ts I made for streaming on Twitch. Head on over there right now. Don't waste any time. You want to see that video. Appreciate it a lot. Everyone, see you next week. Much love. Peace out. Bye-bye.